In this video, I want to show you how you can use Airtable as a growth partner, a coach, or an agency. Using Airtable is really inevitable for your business because Google Sheets are now scalable. So you probably have heard a lot about Airtable and what I want to show you here is how you're going to create something really basic but really impactful for your business and that is the end of day reports. Every single business that I work with are using end of day reports for their sales team. So I'm going to show you from start to finish how you're going to create them within Airtable. Now. When it comes to Airtable, it's not a matter of like knowing what the features are, but it's all about knowing how to use the Airtable features in the right way to build scalable systems. So pay attention to the tips that I'm going to share throughout the video and make sure to watch until the end as I'm going to build this with you. So if you're looking to get started with Airtable, check in the description below. I have put a referral link and we can get started with this right away. Now, if you're scaling to 100K or a million per month, you may as well want to schedule a call with me and my team because what we're doing here is something really basic but maybe you need custom systems built for you so i'll be happy to have you on a call where we can see exactly how we can scale your business to a million per month let's get started with this as you can see here airtable has a feature and that is the feature to create forms you can create forms within airtable you don't need any google forms or type form or jot form nothing like that because you can create forms right here now these are internal forms that you're going to use and you can click here and get the link so what I want to show you is how we're going to create these forms within Airtable. So what I did is I created an empty Airtable database and it's going to be quite similar to what you are going to view when you are creating your own database. So let's get started with this. The first thing you need to do is rename this and usually I like to call it team performance. I like to keep it a bit generic because I'm not going to have just a sales reps end of day reports here, right? I'm going to have the growth team. It could be the sales team. It could be triage team. It could be multiple roles. So that's why I'm calling it team performance. And I usually like to use emojis. So I'm going to find this bar chart and I'm going to add the emoji right here. Now, maybe you don't understand everything about Airtable so far, but this video is not about how Airtable works step by step, but it's more so let's create a tool and let's create a case study within Airtable. So as you can see here, this table, we called it team performance. And in this table, we're going to track just end of day reports. As you're scaling your business, you may need to track more data. Let's say, oh, I want to track my following on social media, or I want to track the engagement or other things or my ads. You should not track anything else besides end of day reports in this table. Otherwise, it's going to get very messy for you. So let's get started with this. As you can see here, Airtable has something called views, and it's a sidebar which you can collapse or you can expand just like this. And what are these views? Well, they are just smart views. Think of it that way, that you can create smart views of the same data. Maybe sometimes you want to hide data. For example, you don't want to look at the notes. You can simply hide them. You can also hide them directly from here. So I can hide literally everything. And it's not that the data is deleted, it's just hidden. All right. So to get started with this, we're going to also create a form. Now, Airtable allows you to create forms from another place, but we're going to create them directly from here. So right here, we're going to call it sales rep EOD. All right. Now, whatever you're going to name the form right here is going to also reflect on the front end and the back end. So for example, if I put EODs, it's going to reflect over here. So make sure that the name makes sense. The team understands what this is all about. And what we're going to do now is we are going to build the form and what we're going to create is fields. All right. So the difference between Google Sheets and Airtable is that over here, these are standard fields, right? This is the first one, which is called the primary key. You don't need to go and study about it. It's just something that that is very standard for databases. And now what you can do is create multiple fields and you have different types of fields. For example, if we're going to track the report date, then we should have a date field. So over here, I selected this format and I'm going to select report date. Okay. And the next one is the team member. So over here, you can go ahead and create a list of team members. For example, you can call them John Smith, George Michael, Maria Vitalis. And you can alphabetize them and also you can change the colors if you like. Now, I'll give you an extra tip here. In reality, I don't use a single select field when I create team members because I have created an entire ecosystem that allows me to onboard team members, have them fill out a form, and then it updates the entire ecosystem on Airtable. This is very interesting. So if you want to see it on a separate video, let me know in the comments below. But for now, just for the sake of simplicity and to get you started with this, you're going to use the single select. And over here, you're going to put team member. And that's basically it. Team member, report date, and we want to track 
what else revenue generated so let's go and copy paste this just to make it a bit faster i'm going to put this on times two speed just to get things going all right so over here total revenue generated you're going to select the currency field you can change the sign for example if you use another sign let's say like you have a british pound or a euros something like this you're going to add it right here. I'm going to use USD and you can select the decimals. Usually you don't want to have multiple decimals. It's good to have it just this way. Next one is the total cash collected. Let's go and create this as well. Right here, total cash collected. And you're going to select currency once again and you're going to remove the decimals. You're going to create the field. So let's create the rest from the template form I have here. The strategy calls. And over here, you're going to use a number type of field. There you go. And strategy calls taken. Remove the decimals. Perfect. And you're going to try the offers made. And you just need to follow the same thing again and again until you're done with the form build. So if you're watching this video right now and you're doing the same, just literally follow the same process again and again and again until you're done. And what else do we have here? Reporting date, the form. Okay, we're going to also ask the team if they updated their CRM. So one thing you need to know about Airtable is that it's best if you don't have very long names for the fields you have here because it can be very messy and nobody likes to read like an entire sentence to understand what this field is all about. So what I would like you to do here when it comes to like asking for the CRM, instead of saying like, did you update the sales CRM? I like to keep this short. So sales CRM updated right? Keep it short. Long titles are just confusing and it is very likely that some people are going to miss the point or not understand what exactly this field is all about. So we're going to select single select yes and no. And I usually like to keep the colors green and red for yes or no questions. Perfect. Sales CRM updated. This is done. And what else? The notes. We need to create a note section. So let's go here. Select long text field and call it notes. We are also going to enable rich text formatting. This allows us to create hyperlinks, headers, and also to create checklists. So actually it already exists. So let me simply just show it. And I'm going to just enable the hyperlink. What I'm also going to do is take these notes and just put it at the bottom over here. You see, I can reorganize and reorder the fields however I like. And I prefer to have it this way because I don't want to see the notes as the first thing here, right? I want to have the notes at the end because I am following the same order as my form. All right, so that is another thing. And the last one we're going to add is the EOD form. The reason you want to have the end of day form right here is because as I told you, you're going to create multiple forms in the same table. So what is going to happen here is that you don't know if this form that was submitted was the sales rep, the appointment setters, the triager. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add this one, single select, and we're going to say UD sales rep, UD setter, UD triager. All right. And that is basically it. I'm going to now also drag it and drop it. You can do that as well. The last thing I need you to know is that for the first column that we have right here, I prefer to create a formula field. There are different reasons why we're doing this, but I'm not going to take the entire video to explain to you, but you want to have the primary key being unique. So what we're going to do is from here, I'm going to go and take this formula. You can pause the video and you can copy paste exactly what I'm showing you right here. And I'm going to simply rename this to EOD and create a formula field looking exactly like this. So here, instead of name, I'm going to use team member and you need to put also the brackets for this to turn purple and then report date. All right, perfect. So now if I have a report date and I have a team member, this is what the name of the EOD of the primary key is going to look like. Let's go and create the actual form because it is all in the back end. Now we need to create the form. As you can see here, we have only these three fields. I'm not going to use the SINE, so I'm going to just simply delete it as a field. And also the statues, I am not going to use this, so I'm going to delete it. I'm going to also disable the Airtable branding. I mean, thank you Airtable, but I'm, we're not going to do this on the front end. And I'm going to start drag and dropping the different fields we have here. So the date, I'm going to make it required total revenue generated, total cash collected. And also you can drag and drop the different fields just above and below each other. And over here, I'm going to make everything required. All right. So let me quickly add everything here. 
All right, perfect. So now this is done. The next thing you need to do is you need to put the EOD form question right here at the top, sales CRM updated. So you're not going to ask your team sales CRM updated. You will say, did you update the sales CRM? This is what your team sees on the front end. On the back, the field is called sales CRM updated. And you're going to use a list. I prefer to have a list instead of a drop down because I don't like to have users clicking two, three times just to find the information, right? So I'm going to click on the list and I'm going to make it as required. I'm also going to put it towards the end, right before the notes. Total cash collected. So I want my team to know in which currency we are collecting cash because you may say that this is obvious, but maybe sometimes we have new team members that they have worked in other offers. So over here, I'm going to put in number only in USD. Now, as this is a form, Airtable also allows you to add a, a short description. You can have a very long description if you like, like paragraphs if you want. All right. But right here, what we're doing is we're giving a hint to our team so they know the format of this question. And this is what it looks like over here. This is number only and you're going to mark it as required team member. This is also required, but you can have also the list view right here. I'm going to put it towards the beginning and over here, strategy calls taken. We're going to use number only, number only, number only, and make sure to make everything as required. Whatever it is that your team needs to respond needs to be required. It's very likely that they're going to miss questions. So schedule calls, let's put it towards the beginning, taken, offers made, Makes sense. Closes, generated, cash collected. When you're creating a form, it also needs to make logically sense, right? You don't want to ask, oh, how much did you collect? And then, oh, did you update the CRM? That does not make a lot of sense, right? So now the form is ready. One thing you will need to do here though, is you need to click on the EOD form and you're going to rename this and say, select the form below. And what you're going to do is you're going to have a list view and you're going to limit the selection to a specific option because this is an end of day report for the sales reps. You're going to select this one and you're going to mark it as required. So now your end of day report is literally ready to be launched. You can click here on share form. You can copy the link and you can launch this new form to track your team members performance. Over here, you can see that they can only select the sales reps EOD. And this is for a specific reason. We want them to select this one. So then they can also fill out the rest. And then when the form is submitted, I'm going to show you one thing, two, three, four, five, six, Yes, notes are not required because maybe we don't have any notes we want to share. Thank you for submitting the form. Amazing. So now that we submitted this, we can see that this form has been submitted by George Michael. All right. The next thing you want to do here is you want to create a view that is only for sales reps, because as you're going to create multiple forms, as I showed you, you can create multiple forms and you can have multiple views. And the way that I know that this is only for setters is because I have created a filter over here. I said, show me only if end of day report is triage. Actually here it should be setter. Perfect. And then show me only if the end of the report is sales rep. The same logic I'm going to follow here. And I'm going to create a grid view that is going to be called EOD sales rep submissions. And I'm going to create a filter and I'm going to say the end of the report form is this one. So now you see everything else was hidden. And how about if I want to hide more fields? For example, maybe I'm going to create so many more fields or ask different questions for end of day reports for setters. Then I want to make sure that I'm only showing the fields that are relevant to the sales report form. So what I can do is click here on the filter and then I can click on copy from another view, select the form and select the visibility and the order and update the configuration. So as you can see here, now the order is exactly the same as for the form. And you can see here, I have this view for the EODs and that's practically it. This is how you create a form within Airtable and you can store it right here. And what I'm going to show you as the last thing is you can add the logos, you can add the covers, that is easy peasy, but I'm going to show you how you're going to create a second form within the same table. So let's get started with this and let's do the end of the report for triagers. So again, we're going to click here on form, end of the report, triager, and we are going to ask the same question. But now instead of limiting the selection to the sales rep, we're going to limit it to triager because we want them to select this. The reason why we want them to select it is because every time the form is submitted, I want to know kind of automatically that this is from the sales rep and not from the triager. All right. 
and they're going to simply select it themselves. So that makes it easier for everyone to know where this data is coming from. Next one, report date. We don't need to create new fields for this because they are being shared across different forms. So I'm going to use the same one. Report date, yes, I'm going to use this. Team member, yes, I'm going to use this. Make it a list view. Schedule strategy calls. So a triager is a person who is taking discovery calls. Therefore, I cannot use this question. So I'm going to click right here and remove it. Strategy calls taken, offers made, closes. It all has to go. Total revenue generated, but we want to ask them if they updated the CRM. So let me quickly copy and paste the question from here. Did you update the sales CRM? Perfect make it required. So now we need to add a few more questions. And these questions are triage calls scheduled, triage calls they can qualify, disqualified, canceled, follow-ups, no shows. All right. So I'm going to quickly add them and I'll see you at the end of this one. And disqualified calls and qualified calls. We need to add those as well right here. Don't just change the name on the front end. You need to also change it on the back end. Otherwise, you'll be wondering what is field 18? What, where is it used? All right. So field 18, give it a name, give it the right format. Perfect. Disqualified. And also we have to add qualified questions, qualified calls here and here. Let's add the notes at the bottom of this form. And let's also add the question to update the CRM towards the end. So I think we have everything here. Follow-ups, no shows. How did your day go? Everything is looking good. Let's remove also the branding. I really don't like to have the Airtable branding there. And maybe if you have a paid plan, you can remove it. But if you have a free plan, maybe you cannot remove it. So check it out. Over here, you can add also description. You can add your logo. So now you have two forms. You have the EOD for the triager, which I also put an emoji here. Let me put it on the sales rep form. Now you have two forms, all right? But when it comes to the smart views, you only have a smart view for the sales reps. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to quickly duplicate this one and I'm going to give it a new name. Okay, over here at the top, I'm going to remove the word copy, select triager. And from here, then I need to change the filter, select triager. And I'm going to copy the view settings from the form. So one, two, boom. Now everything is ready. So let's go and submit one form and let's see what it looks like on the back end. So for triager. Awesome. So this is submitted. One thing you may have noticed is that over here, I didn't add the fields that are saying number only. I would highly recommend that you do it though. But for the sake of this video and to move things fast, I have not added it. It's really important that you put the format here as a hint. So then your team is not frustrated or confused why the form is not being submitted when they try to add text. As you guys can see, we have here the different views. I like to put them in this order. So every time now we have a new end of day report submitted by a triager, you can see all the numbers right here. The best part about Airtable is that at the bottom, you also have the metrics. You have the sum or you can have the average, the median, the max or the minimum, and you can play around with this data. You can also create an interface, which can be very interesting. Just like this, you can start building an interface. You can call it EOD interface. And you can go with the dashboards. For example, we can go with this one and we can use it this way. And you can play around with the different functions that there are here on the dashboard. I'm not going to go through this because it could be a bit complicated for you and you may have like an analysis paralysis. So for now, what I would like you to do is to complete the two forms, make sure that everything is looking good, the forms are ready and you can launch them and use them with your team right away. So that's it for today. And I hope you enjoyed this video where we created the end of the reports for your team. There's so much more that you can do on Airtable. And if you would like me and my team to come in and build the systems for you or show you how to build them the right way, then you can schedule a call with a link right in the description. And if you're getting started with systems and you want to build your first few automations, the one click onboarding is the best tool that you can get started with. Whether it is for your clients that you're onboarding or you're looking to build automations to prepare for your launch, the one click onboarding is the best tool that you can get started with. You get also access to our private school community and I'll be looking forward to seeing you there. Thanks for watching and take care. Bye.